Today we're going to talk about uh, dipsticks as we continue to talk about urinalysis. Uh, when we're doing urinalysis, they are really divided into two parts. What we call the urine tops, which is the dipstick, and the urine bottom, which is the microscopic. So for this discussion, we're going to talk about the urine tops. These are the dipsticks that we use. The dips, when we use a dipstick, we want to open up our container, and we want to remove one dipstick at a time, and then close our container. It is very important we keep our container closed so that we don't get any moisture in there, because moisture will actually uh, deteriorate the chemicals that are on the strips. If we look at the strip, we will see that there are little uh, square pads, and each one of these pads contains a chemical. Now, as we do our discussion on uh, the chemical analysis of urine, you will find out what is on every pad and uh, the chemical reaction of every pad, the reagents on every pad, and the colors that they will turn. But this is your dipstick. As with every other area of the lab, we have to do quality control in your analysis. Uh, we're lucky in your analysis because we only have to do it once every 24 hours. But we will use both a positive and a negative quality control. The lab assistants will do the quality control for the entire class each day that we have lab. They will record the results and put them up front on the desk for the other students to um, look at and to record. We have here two controls, a quality control one and a quality control two. One is for normal urine, negative, and two is for positive. So we want to check both the positive and the negative um, results for our dipsticks. Why do we do quality control? Well, we want to be sure that our dipsticks are working. So we have to prove that they're working by doing our quality control. We're going to label the tubes with uh, negative quality control. And then this one has already been labeled with a positive quality control. And I will add the quality control material to these um, containers. Of course, I will mix them, and you always want to let them come to room temperature. This is the number two. This is positive. I want to put about 10 ml of fluid in here. And then I want to do the negative. Then I'm going to add about 10 ml, 10 to 12 ml of the negative quality control. I'm going to get my urine requisition, and I will write on the first one, positive QC, and on the second one, negative Q. I will put the date up here, and today is 10-15-09. Then the first thing I'm going to do is take my negative, remove a stick, Cover it. I'm going to take my stick and I'm going to dip it quickly into the urine and then come straight out and pull it along the lip of the container to get rid of excess liquid and then wet, um, put it along the chem wipe to um, get rid of the rest of the excess liquid. Then I can lay my stick along the reading table on the back of the chem strip 
Now we do not read specific gravity with the chem strip, so we ignore that one. And the first one is we have to wait 60 seconds and uh, then we can begin to read. It has been 60 seconds, so I want to start reading. We don't read specific gravity with the stick. We read that with our refractometer. But the pH, I match it with the closest color. You can see that the pH will be a pH of 8. Then the next one is leukocytes. I need to wait two minutes for it, so I will skip it. The third one is nitrites. Notice there's no pink color, so it's negative. The protein is negative. The ketones are negative. The urobilinogen is normal. The bilirubin is uh, negative, and the blood is negative. Now it's time to read our leukocytes, and they are negative. We take our um, dipstick, and we put it into the biohazard, and then we record our final reading. Negative. Okay, next we're going to read our positive quality control. The first thing we do is we pick up the um, can of our sticks, dipsticks. We remove a dipstick, put the top back on the container, pick up our urine again. Let's put this here so we can blot off the rest of our liquid. We'll put this directly into the urine, drag it along the edge, blot off the excess liquid, note the time, and then be prepared to read. You can see these are coming up really quickly, but timing is critical, so we don't read them until it is time. 60 seconds has elapsed, and now we can read. Again, we do not read our specific gravity, but our pH is going to be a pH of, it's closer in color to 9 than it is to 8, so it's a pH of 9. The, um... The pos there's a positive nitrite because it's pink. The protein is, as you see, it says 100 plus. So it's a 2 plus, and that's the way we report it in our, in our lab, is a 2 plus. When we get to glucose, we see that it is at between 250 and 500. The ketones are 1 plus. The urobilinogen is... Four. The okay. bilirubin is three plus, and the blood. We need to talk about the blood because blood is re uh, is reported is shown as both red cells, intact red cells, and hemoglobin. In this case, there's so much blood that we can't tell, but it never matters because blood is blood. So we and we use one plus trace one plus and two plus and three plus. We do not report the number of cells. We will report the number of cells when we look at the microscope, but here we have a 3 plus blood. So let's write down our results. The pH was 9. The leukocytes we can see now are positive. It's a 2 plus leukocytes. Uh, Nitrites are only um, reported positive or negative, so they are positive. The protein is 2 plus. The glucose was two, uh, 500 milliliters, milligrams, not milliliters. Ketones were 2 plus. Urobilinogen were 4 early. Bilirubin was uh, 3 plus, and blood was 3 plus. Now we will compare the results that we got from the results that we were expected to get from the brochure. Then we always want to sign our work and date it. And we want to sign our level 1 and date it. 